Hi, so this video is going to be on linear graphing by special request. So, first thing we need to do is just review what we're looking at here. This is the coordinate plane. Um, in the center, we have the point zero, zero. This is called the origin. And so that means that we are zero away horizontally and zero away vertically. Any point can be described by a coordinate pair. So for example, 3 over 1 up is the point 3, 1. Uh, we always name the x coordinate, the how far over first, and then the y coordinate, how far up and down. Um, points can be positive or negative. Um, and each of these quadrants has different characteristics. So here, uh, the points, and this is the first quadrant, they're all going to be positive x and positive y. Over here we have negative x and positive y, both are negative, positive x and negative y. Um, that's all just really quick reviews so that we know what we're talking about for linear graphing. And if any of that's confusing or I went too fast, I can review any of those concepts in a separate video. Just let me know. So we're going to be doing three things in this little lesson. Um, we're going to be graphing lines, we are going to find the slope of lines, and we're going to uh, find what's called the y-intercept of the line. So slope's a pretty straightforward concept. Essentially what slope means is how steep is the line. So we're going to draw a couple of lines here. Um, I don't have a straight edge tool on my app, so we're going to have to just do our best. Um, here's a line, here's a line, okay, actually cross. Um, it seems pretty straightforward that this line is steeper. If we think about a hill, this is a steeper hill that we're going up. This one's not as steep, and this one's even less steep. Um, the steepness is what's known as the slope. So this has the greatest slope. This is has a medium slope, and this has the least slope. Now, another thing that we have to talk about is why we have an equation for describing our lines. Um, every line is described by the general equation y equals mx plus b. Now, what that means, we're just going to talk it through, is that at any place on the y-axis, we're going to know what the x-coordinate on that line should be by using our formula. Now, you see down here I've written m equals and b equals. That's because we need to find the slope and the y-intercept for the line. What's really nice about linear graphing is that the slope is right in the formula. Um, this line doesn't... this written up here, y equals x plus 1, doesn't have anything in the m spot. Now, why is that? What are we multiplying x by? Well, anything times 1 is itself, so that's 1x. So the slope for this line would be 1. Now, we didn't talk about y-intercept yet. Now, what that means is that... Look, I'm going to draw just kind of a random line here. Now, a line is always straight. What I drew is not straight, but we're going to pretend that it was, because I was just drawing it quickly. Um, and we're also going to pretend that I drew really neatly, and I hit exactly on 2 here. That would, it, it would mean that the, this line is intercepting, or crossing, the y-axis at 2. So, that line would have a y-intercept of 2. Now, the line in our problem is not that line. The line in our problem is going to look like this. You're going to notice I did a couple of things differently here. First, I drew more carefully. Uh, if you're doing this on paper, you must use a straight edge to draw a good line. Um, the app I'm using doesn't have a straight edge tool, otherwise I would absolutely be using one. Now, how did I know that this line 
looks like this. Well, this line has a slope of 1. We're going to talk about how I know that in a moment. And it intercepts the y-axis at the point 0, 1. It's 0 over on the x, and it's up 1. So that's the constant here at the end. It's the plus b part of my um, formula. So this has a y-intercept of 1. Now let's talk about the slope a little more. First thing we're going to do is we're going to erase my line, and we're going to learn how to draw it from the formula. So if I take any y point, let's say I want to have a, um, well, no, that's a terrible way to do this. Let's think about the x coordinate instead. So let's plug in some numbers. Let's say that I wanted my x to be 0. So remember, our formula is y equals x plus 1. And I'm saying that the x is 0. So for an x of 0, well, an x of 0 is the y-axis. Axis. Here's 0, 0. Anything on the y-axis is not over any. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's right along the y-axis. So the formula tells me that the y equals the x, which is 0, plus 1. So if I solve, 0 plus 1 is 1, so y equals 1. So I, I can plot a point right here at 0, 1. Well, what if I, let's, let's pick another number. Let's, I, let's do a y for x equals 3. So the y, uh, let's make that a little neater. y equals 3 plus 1, which is 4. So what I first said is that the x is going to be 3, so it's going to be on this vertical line. And the y we solved in our problem is 4. Now, what if I just increased it by 1? What if I went to y, uh, uh, x equals 4? Well, if I move from 3 to 4, what's going to happen to the y-coordinate? Well, the y-coordinate is also going to increase by 1, um, because in this line, the y is always 1 more than the x. Now, if I take my straight edge and I draw straight through it, the line is going to look roughly like this. Each time I increase my my um, my x by one, I'm also increasing the y by one, like that. That's the slope. Makes like a set of stairs, doesn't it? And it's it's one step over, one step up. Not all lines have that slope. Some lines are steeper or less steep. Um, you might do two steps over and one step up. And uh, we'll look at another example in a moment with uh, a slope like that. This problem we're going to be looking at y equals minus 3x minus 3. Um, right away, this problem is less friendly. We have 3x, in, well, negative 3x instead of just x, and we have a negative constant. We have minus 3 instead of plus 1. So how is that going to change things? Well, let's, let's start this time by drawing the line. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to, whoops, we're going to create some sample points. So, I'm essentially just going to draw a little t-chart here, and I'm going to say if the x is 0, if the x is 1, 
2, and 3. Let's draw those four points. So if the x is 0, y equals minus 3 times 0 minus 3. Uh, minus 3 times 0 is 0, so it's 0 minus 3, or just minus 3. Um, let's graph that point. Um, so what I said is that the x is 0, so this is going to be on the y-axis. Axis, The y is minus 3. What about if the x is 1? So y equals minus 3 times 1 minus 3 equals, well, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. So, if the x is 1, so that's on this line, the y is going to be all the way down here at minus 6. Now, what's going to happen if I try to solve for, for the y-coordinates for 2 and 3? I mean, I can certainly do it, but it's going to be off my graphs. But let's find out what happens. So, minus 3. So let's write it a 3 that looks like a 3. Times 2. Minus 3. So, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 minus 6 minus 3 equals negative 9. So negative 9 doesn't fit on my graph that I have. Um, but this would be on, on the for the x of 2, so it's down this line. It's going to be way down there somewhere. In fact, I'm going to estimate it's right about there. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's, let's not solve one for three because it's going to be so far off the graph. Instead, let's erase that. Let's get one more point on here. What if I used an x of negative one? So it would be y negative three times negative one minus three equals. So negative three times negative one is positive three and three minus three is zero. Huh. So, what that tells me is if the x is negative 1, which is right over here, that the y is 0. So, my point actually goes right there. So, what's different about this line than the one we just did? Well, first of all, I'm noticing that if I start connecting these points, that the line seems to have be running in the opposite direction. And that's because it has a negative slope. If we think back to the original formula we talked about, the m, y equals mx plus b, the slope is negative 3. So first of all, this is a steeper line. Imagine going down this on a sled. Uh, it'd be very steep. And it's running in the opposite direction because it's negative. It's getting, as the x gets bigger, the y gets smaller and smaller. Um, uh, just in your mind, I want you to think, where would the point where the x is negative 2 be? Can you predict? Well, it would be right here. See, this with this slope of negative 3, every time we move over 1, like this, we end up moving down 3. That's what a slope of negative 3 means. Oops, that makes it look a little strange. Okay. And if we extend our line, which I recommend doing whenever you're drawing a line, it's going to look something like this. And again, doing this by hand, it's really important to use a straight edge. Um, now, where is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is right here. Uh, that's where the line 
intercepts the y-axis. It's at negative 3, and that fits with what we said about the formula 2, that the minus 3. So how do we record this? So the slope, we said, was negative 3, and the intercept is negative 3. All right, so I have another problem for us here. y equals 1 half x plus 2. Um, we've looked at problems where the slope, whether it was positive or negative, that just determines which direction it's running, um, was greater than 1, which means it was pretty steep, or if it was exactly 1, we get that nice 45-degree angle. What do you think it'll be if it's a number that's between 0 and 1? Um, that's what we're going to find out right now, with 1 half x as the slope. I already went ahead and filled in the the uh, m equals 1 half and b equals 2. That means the slope is 1 half and the y-intercept is going to be 2. I know that from the formula, but let's prove that it's true. Uh, let's think about this y-intercept number. That should be... What that means is that the line is going to intercept the y-axis at 2, at the point 0, 2. So what we're saying is that that's what it's going to be if the x is 0. Let's make sure that that's right, though. So y equals 1 half times 0 plus 2. 1 half times 0, anything times 0 is 0, so plus 2. We get a y of 2 if the x is 0. And we know that point is on the line. Let's, uh, let's try another point. What, would, what about an x of 1? Um, so here we're talking about if the x is 1, what would the y be? So y equals 1 half times 1, that's 1 half, plus 2. So it's 2 and a half. So it would be right about here, but you know what? I don't like to freehand points. I've been freehanding the line, which is a really terrible idea, but I'm not going to guess where the points are. Now, is the point there? It absolutely is. Um, but... I'd like to use a whole number point so I can get it neatly onto my grid. What number would work better, do you think? I'm going to use 2. Because if I use an even number to multiply by 1 half, um, I'll get a whole number answer. So y equals 1 half times 2, that's 1, plus 2 is 3. That point... Um, well, it's for an x of 2, so I'm going to go up from there, to a y of 3, right here. Yeah, tidy that up a little bit. That looks better. Um, let's, uh, let's go crazy. Let's try another number. Let's try negative 4. Um, why didn't I pick, say, negative 3 or negative 5? Well, for the same reason that I'm going to, I want nice whole numbers to graph. So, since I'm multiplying by 1 half, I need an even number to get a whole number answer. So, y equals 1 half times negative 4. Negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2. Uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So, for an x of negative 4, it's going to end up right on the x-axis because the y is 0. That means, if I come over here, if I, if I follow my line over to an x of negative 4, the y-coordinate is 0, lands right on the line. Uh, that's the x-intercept. And if we imagine how the line's going to look, well, if I have an x that's any smaller than negative 4, I'm going to have a negative y. If I keep going this way, I'm going to continue to have larger positive y values. Um, and can we maybe estimate just by looking what we think the um, x for negative 2, the y, rather, for an x of negative 2 would be? Looks like it would be right here at, at negative 2. Let's see if, uh, or at, oh, for a y of 1, rather, for negative 2. So let's see if that fits. Well, 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So for an x of negative 2, 
I get positive 1, and it's right where we thought it would be. So the line looks like this. And I haven't quite finished it because I want to think about what the rule is for a slope of 1 half. What a slope of 1 half is telling me is that every time we go over 1, we're only going up by 1 half. It's much... It's a much um, shallower staircase than that first one. Um, sl slopes, like a slope of three, like big, bigger slopes, mean that if we're going over one, we go up three, and it gets steep quickly. It's like that negative problem we just did. So, following the rule, if I go over 1, I go up 1 half, then I go over 1, then I go up 1 half. This is how the line would look if I continued it to the edge of my graph. So this is the most unfriendly example that I was asked about. Um, we've got y equals 4 thirds x minus 4. So, first of all, let's do the easy step. We know, just based on the formula, that that means the slope is 4 thirds. Uh, let me make that a little neater. That the slope is 4 thirds, and that the y-intercept is minus 4. Um, and, again, the y-intercept makes some sense, because if we think about plugging in 0 for the x, then it would be 0 times 4 thirds, minus 4. So we end up with a point down here at minus 4 for an x of 0. But we've got this really ugly improper fraction as a slope. Now first of all, is 4 thirds greater than or smaller than 1? It's greater than. So we know that the slope's going to be a little bit bigger than that nice 45 degree angle slope of 1. Um, it's going to be definitely bigger than that, but it's not going to be as big as, say, a slope of 2 or a slope of 3. Um, it's it's not, not a huge slope. Now, to actually draw the line, I need to figure out two points at least. The first one I, I just did mentally was for a slope, uh, for, rather, for the x point 0. Where are we? Well... It means that y is negative 4. Now remember on that last problem with the slope of 1 half, I, I th before I started trying to graph points, I thought about what numbers are going to be friendly. I wanted even numbers for a slope of 1 half. Here my slope is thirds. It's 4 thirds to be exact. <clears throat> but what kinds of numbers are going to play nicely with thirds? Well, I think if I use multiples of 3, <clears throat> we might find that this gets a little easier. So, let's think about another point. Let's, I'm just redrawing that for neatness. What if I used an x of 3? So, once more. That means that the x-coordinate's going to be 3. We're figuring out where does the y-coordinate go. I picked 3 because if I have, if I'm multiplying 4 thirds by 3, it's going to cancel nicely because this is really 4 divided by 3. That's the secret meaning to any fraction is you're dividing the numerator by the denominator. Um, and I have some fractions videos on here that go into that if you're curious. Um, and then I'm multiplying by 3, so 4 divided by 3 times 3, um, or you could work it out sort of the fractions root, and you say, oh, 4 thirds times 3 wholes, that's 12 thirds. 12 thirds simplifies to 4. So, that suddenly got a lot friendlier. If this is 4, then this is just 4 minus 4, or 0. How do I graph that? Well, I'm saying that the x-coordinate was 3 and the y-coordinate was 0. I think I see what our line, what our line is going to look like. 
uh, if I connect these points, we're going to get a line that looks something like this. But I'd like to get one more point on there, if it's possible. What other multiples of 3 could we fit onto the graph? Uh, what about an x of 6? So if the x is 6, well, let's, let's maybe do this the fractions root. 4 times 6 is 24, divided by 3 is 8. That just fits onto mine. So this is or 8 minus 4 equals 4. Uh, yes, my, my, as I say, my graph goes over to 6, so I have an x of 6, which is right at the edge, and the y works out to 4. Just fits. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and try to draw the line. You can really see the importance of being, using a straight edge with this kind of problem, because I'd have to think about each of these points as being some number of thirds up or down, and I just don't want to do that. So I figured out three points, and ideally I would use a straight edge to connect everything. I'll have to figure out some way to do that in the future on this. Um, so, again, what, what the slope means is that every time we increase the y by one, or rather increase the x by one, the y is going to go up by four thirds, um, which is just over one. So, looks like I drew this relatively reasonably. Um, it's not perfect. Um, I bet you can do better with pencil and paper. Well, that's sort of my quick review of what linear graphing looks like. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, yeah, have a good day.